Uh, just a reminder, last week we were talking about uh, from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And in, the, in that passage, we were reminded, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith, not by works, not by anything else in all creation except for Jesus Christ, so that no one can boast, oh, I'm good enough, I have enough, I know enough, I've done enough. The only thing that can provide salvation for us is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As I picture Paul writing this, I, I kind of see him writing that down and maybe putting his pen down for a second and then taking a breath and go, okay, I've reminded them how much it is important it is for them to know that, that, they're, that they're loved by God, saved by grace, and it's nothing they can do. What should I write next? And so he writes these words in, in verse 10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. I've always just, it, it just reminds us that you can't read a, a passage in um, just, you can't just pick out two verses and go, okay, let's close it up. That's it. That you really do have to read it in context and, and what goes on because what, what Paul is saying here is you're not saved by good works. Now go out there and do some good works. Right? There's this tension that, that has to be uh, talked about and played with. And this morning uh, we're going to, uh, to look, look at that. I think the first time I really connected, I, I had a little memory pack. I've told you that by the, a group called the Navigators when I was a young Christian and he had Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and I memorized a whole bunch of verses without going on and reading the next ones. And when I finally read this one, I went, huh? Uh, because of that, that tension is there. So the question I had as I was looking at, at this passage was how do we keep our motivation for serving God as it was meant to be and as it should be? How do we keep from falling back into that, that works righteousness? I can be good and, and right with God by my works. And this morning I'd like to, to, to give a couple of thoughts and I, and I wanna, certainly want to, uh, each of us has our own ways of, of looking at this, but this morning uh, I, I have two, two thoughts. First of all, by seeing God, how God sees us, how he views us, and the second one is by responding uh, to, to God and his great gift in thankfulness. I was reading a, a book recently, and I'm sure y'all hear me say that all the time. I was reading, uh, the last time I was reading, it was a devotional, it was a, so I was reading this week or a couple of weeks ago, and the question that came out, it was, uh, it was uh, I think it's a pretty simple question, but it takes a while to maybe answer. And the question was, how do you think God feels about you? Ooh, how do you, you know, it depends on the day, the hour, the time, you know, if he's really watching me really closely or if he's, you know, got his busy elsewhere looking at, how does God really think about me and, and feel about me? And so, uh, and even more, how does he feel about me is even more uh, pressing than how does he think about me? And I know that as I started thinking about how other people have answered this question in our conversations over the years, there's a group of people who are pretty convinced that God is really angry at them all the time. And, and that God has is, is really put them here on, on earth to, to make their, their life unpleasant, uh, to make them squirm, sweat, wiggle, so that they will somehow give in and, and worship him because um, he's, he, he, somehow they, they see him as very selfish and he's angry. And uh, th there's a lot of people. You may think, how, how could anybody feel that way? You, you may feel that way this morning, that uh, there was a, a, a sermon way, way, way long time ago, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And um, one of the things that I, that I see in, in, in Scripture, as we even heard it in the call to worship, is that uh, God is slow to anger, we are told. God doesn't walk around angry. You can't walk around angry 
and loving at the same time. It's it's just a it's just a contradiction. And so the the people the people who feel like God's always angry at us and and or maybe just angry at you. I want to say God is slow to anger. He doesn't he he loves you. And and one of the things that that it goes on to say in Psalm 103, God is slow to anger, but he's merciful and gracious. Now there is a, a time of judgment, but what we what we see in the New Testament is that that God was so fed up with not us but but sin that He sent Jesus to take our sin because He loved us. Now, if He was angry at us, would He would He take our sin on by sending His own Son? And yet, that's what many people feel. I, I, I want to say this morning, I don't I don't believe. Uh, you know, that God, God does hate sin, but he's not always angry at you if you feel that way. When I started thinking about God before I, I read about Jesus, I would sit on the, I was sitting on some steps uh, at one of the places that I was living as a teenager and I'd go out at night and I'd look at the stars and just kind of contemplate and look and uh, I, I, I didn't know who God was in Jesus, but I, I just knew there was a God. I couldn't look around me and deny that. And as I sat there, I started thinking, well, what is, what is God like? And I, and I really kind of came down with this vision of God sitting, who created all this beautiful stuff, got a rocking chair, set it up on a cloud, and just like I do on the porch some, some weeks, just kind of sit there and rock and watch things go by and watch this happen, but it was really pretty passive. And there are people that feel like not only is God pretty passive, but he's impa- that he's pretty uh, indifferent towards them. And I want to say this morning that God is not indifferent towards you at all. God has passionately loved you. As much as you've ever loved anything, that is just a drop of sand compared to the kind of love that God has for you. God loves you. And that is my third point this morning of that. How do you feel like God loves you, feels about you? He loves you deeply. He cares for you more than you could ever imagine. I I just ran into this verse um, in the last year or so, and you would think I'd have them all memorized by now, but I've still got a couple to go. And it was from Zephaniah 3, 17. And in this passage, being, being a musician... I, I took it's 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 funny the different verses that hit you in a different seasons in Zephaniah and uh, it says that the Lord God is with you that God is not somewhere over there He's right here He is with you that we often say Lord be with me you don't have to pray for Him to come and be with you God is already with you I, the, we He is He was here when we got here this morning He is with us with the Holy Spirit everywhere we go. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. Great delight. And God does take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you in singing. I didn't know God sang. But why not? Think of all the beautiful music that's been created. What we've heard this morning and when we listen to radio, songs on the radio and all the different plays, the, the, how we get moved by singing. I, 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 can't, I look forward to seeing how, how God puts all of our variety of taste together in heaven. I believe it will happen. And, and how, how wonderful it will be to hear music as, as God has created it in so many different ways to help us worship him and just worship in general. Think about God rejoicing over you in singing. Sometimes I think people forget God created us. He created you. In Psalm 139, the psalmist says, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. 
God has known us before anyone else knew us. And sometimes I get a, a sense of that. We were at a celebration uh, this, this, uh, this past, oh, last night, and, and one of our, our youth from uh, the past, uh, that I, I, I say I knew him before he, he knew he was him. Because uh, I remember when I heard that he was expected, and I watched him grow. And I watched him move. And, and, I, and I watched him be born. Riley didn't know who he was when he was Riley, named Riley. I knew Riley before Riley knew Riley. And he stood there last night holding his baby girl. I thought, wow, how wonderful is that? God, all that, that, that we go through in life and all that he's been through and every one of us, God already knows he already loves. He already cares. John 3.16, that verse that we, we get to and we want to get to to make sure we know that somebody's got to believe in Jesus so they get to heaven. We often forget to read the first part or at least hear it really in our heart. For God so loved the world. It doesn't say, for God was so mad at them that he said he had to send Jesus because he was so mad. Or he hated them and no, it said, for God so loved the world, you and me. Not because we deserved it, not because we earned it. He loved us before we were we. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only his son, that whoever would believe in him, would in, the other part of it is that we receive eternal life. Friends, that's good news. He loved us so much, he's given us the best thing that's ever been created. We come to our verse this morning, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to, to good do, work, do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. In the New Living uh, Translation, it says this. We are God's masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do good things that he planned for us long ago. Think about what a wonderful artist God is. Sunsets, sunrises. I haven't seen too many of them, but they, I hear they're beautiful, sunrises. Beaches and oceans and pelicans. Mountains and streams and waterfalls, whales, giraffes. God had to be thinking, watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah. What else you got? Well, I got a hippo. You want to see a hippo? If you look at all these things and realize in the ocean and, and uh, just how majestic our earth really is, we've become so numb to it. We've, we've missed just the beauty all around us because we spend all our time watching, listening, looking. We, we're walking around like, like this all day long. And it's not just the kids. It's all of us, Every sing myself included. To the point we miss this most beautiful experience we call life. I can't tell you how many times I've gone somewhere and I'm taking pictures and doing all that. And, and, and I stop and think, I don't really remember the event, but I can show you a picture. I was framing it and getting it just right, putting a filter on it, putting it on Facebook, and it's all great. But I, did, I didn't take it in. How was it, Brian? Well, I think it, it seemed pretty good. But we are, all those things. I look at little ants when they decide to take a stick across the driveway. And I go, wow, you know, they're stronger than I am. And how they get, they work, to, they know how to work together and they take those things across there. And there are things that, you know, I still haven't figured out why God's created yet. But he, he created them, and he had work for them to do. 
to be a part of our, our creation, uh, to take care of things in ways that we may not even understand at this point. And the same thing is, uh, is, is for me and you. I have to tell you, I'm not a big fan of snakes. But I think snakes probably take care of a lot of things that I'm not paying attention to, that I'm thankful that they're taken care of. In fact, if a few would come through my yard and take care of those cute little chipmunks, I probably wouldn't be too upset. Got big holes down there. They're making tunnels under my house, and it's starting to shift. But God has created all these things. They have a purpose. Everything that's been created has a reason in the and the ecosystem and, and you know, the, the, just the, the chain that's out there. That, uh, and, and the same with me. You may look at someone and think, I can't believe God made that one. And that one's going, oh, look at that one. Shh, little head up there. I, when Linda and I were, were first married, we couldn't afford to, to actually do much. So we'd go to a mall there in Charlotte, and we'd just sit and watch people. And we would sometimes imagine what they did for a living, what their jobs were. That one's a doctor, this one's a juggler, that one's an armed robber. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's get out of here, that sort of thing. But we would just look at and just people are just so interesting if you really take time to look at them. And, and you know, I, I get a, a little confused with all this uh, uh, issue we have, and I know it's sin, but in the world, when when we look at all the different races and nationalities and places, you know, God made all those people and everywhere, and there and He He has a purpose for them. He has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. God is a master artist. Uh, I don't know who you who you prefer as an artist. I, I kind of liked uh, Thomas Kincaid, who was was one of my my the ones I love the, the the painter of light. If you've ever seen, you take a, a painting of his and you go into a part of the room and turn you have a light on it, and turn the rest of the lights down, and then you turn the lights down on the picture, and there are parts that just start to glow in the picture. Um, I, I love him. Other people go, ah, oh, no, it's just two pops. You know, I don't like that. I like Van Gogh and things that are abstract, or I like, you know, I like uh, just uh, impressionistic kind of things. And, you know, there are, there are paintings I go by and go, no, that wasn't it either. And uh, there are things in this world that, I, that I, I don't appreciate the way I probably was meant to appreciate them, but... On weeks like this, when I remind myself God's made them, I'm, I'm more thankful. That you are God's masterpiece. And he's created you uniquely to go out and, and make something wonderful in this world that reflects his love and grace in this world. As we look at our church, maybe it is being a part of connecting threads and sewing and sewing machines and knitting and doing all these things. Uh, I had uh, somebody uh, posted that uh, we had uh, uh, one of our friend's dads was a knitter. Uh, his last, as he spent his last um, days in, in, the, in the bed or last years, and every week he would, he did enough knitting to make us, was it a sweater? I made mean, a sweater a week knitting. Probably gave them to some wonderful people that needed them. You know, you may be a connecting thread person. You may be, um, you know, a comforting arms person and reaching out and loving people there. You may be part of, like I always mention, our food pantry. This week, Kenya, people are going to Kenya. They're there, you know, and, and I, I'm always reminded of that song, uh, that, that Scott Wesley Brown song, Please Don't Send Me to Africa. You know, and um, that 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 he write, he wrote about many many years ago. And I'm so thankful that there are people called to go and that that have a passion for it. They go and and they make such a uh, an impression and do so many great things. And again, I could I, I've probably forgotten somebody. Um, I'll I'll catch it next time. Uh, so so through each of our ways of being God's masterpiece, we're we're created to go out. And God said, not just to be hung on a wall, sat in a seat. We can pray. You know, there are times in our lives when we can do more than other times. We can call. Some of us have great work, do great works with their hands. 
You know, in the past years, we've had people that, that came together and fixed cars for people who did, did things at people's houses and homes. Um, that people gathering together, realizing that God has given them certain talents and gifts to do amazing, wonderful things. We have choirs and praise teams who've been given great voices, who are, are, are sharing uh, God's love in unique ways. The, the point is, each of us are called to share whatever God's given us, no matter how small it is, no matter how big it is. You know, I, I, every once in a while, our card ministry, or actually on a pretty regular basis, they still send me a card, letting me know that they're praying for me. Uh, and I, I can't tell you, you know, how many real pieces of mail we get anymore, right? Not a lot. And a card is only that big. But it is, it is one of the most, sometimes one of the most meaningful things you can get in a week. To know that some people stopped and prayed for you. And, and they remembered you. And they're lifting you up. It's a wonderful gift if you get, get one of those cards those are just some of the, the ways that people in our church reach each other. And that's just, just, just observing here in the church. There are many of you who do things in, in ways in, that I, I'll never know. In places that I've never seen. In ways that I can only just give thanks for. Hopefully, as we take in God's grace, the motivation for knowing that we are loved and knowing that we are made, and knowing that we are a masterpiece, is that we want to use what's been given to us to go out and make a difference in the world. Because that's where God's true joy comes from. It's not from gathering, collecting, being passive, whatever. It, it's, it's from going out and making a difference in the world. I don't think I've shared this story in a long time, so I'll share this one again. I, I remember back when I was 17 or 18, I, I had uh, my grandmother, I was going to church, I started going, she made me, you know, I was 18, but you, you have to dress up to go to that church, and so I did. And she got me a, a pair of gray wool slacks, and I wore them like once or twice, but they were the nicest pants I'd ever had. And so I, I didn't, I, you know, I felt uncomfortable, I'm going I'm to spill something on them. People ask me why I like Hawaiian shirts so much. I say, well, partly I love the colors, the flowers, and all that. Partly is I'm going to spill something on myself, and I'm going to hope that maybe you think it was meant to be there. <laughs> Lance's shirt, I'd never get away with that. White shirt. And so I just wore those. My grandmother didn't check because she didn't go to church with me, but I just wore those really nice gray. I could still see them, feel them. They were the nicest feeling wool slacks. You, you had to get them, take them to the to the dry cleaner, right? <laughs> I haven't been there in a while. <laughs> you had to take them to the dry cleaner and I put them in there. And then one day I said, you know, no, I'm going to got, yeah, I, I've got this wonderful, I'm going to use, I'm going to wear them out. I went in, I pulled them out, I put them on and, and something had eaten a hole right in the middle of it right there. Uh, because it, it just been sitting in there and had, my house wasn't that clean where I was living and something decided that was a good lunch. Think of the gifts you've been given, big or small. They're really important. They won't make God love you. Circle back around Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. God already loved you. He loved you so much that he made you a masterpiece, and he gave you a talent that he wants you to go out, and he wants you to cheerfully give and do good works. I know that some of us have grown up in environments that we just felt like God was mad at us, we had to earn God's pleasure by doing a lot of good things. And at the end of the day, there was going to be a, a tally. For some of you, you're too young to remember the old adding machines with the roll of paper. And, and then finally, ding, and you pull it out and you had all these things. All right, enough good works. You can come in. Not going to happen. But God has given you good works to do. And hopefully because you're thankful that he's created you with these talents, and some of us just need to be reminded that we're special to him and that we are worthy of going out and making the world a better place. Many of you will not remember another one of my favorite artists, Bob Ross. Big hair, Bob Ross. 
he would be on Saturday morning, big hair Bob Ross would get up there and he'd paint a mountain or a little stream and he'd talk real quiet and he'd make a little mark and he'd go, we're going to make a little mark right here. And, and we're going we're gonna to turn this, come on, make a mark with me. And then we do something else to it. And, and at the end, and every once in a while, so, and he goes, and every once in a while, you're going to make a mistake. And he'd make a little mistake. And he, then he'd come back around. And, and this is how you make a mistake better. And it was just so soothing. And I, I, I never sat down and painted with Bob Ross. But I, I think he's still on some PBS stations, which tells you that maybe they need some new programming at times. But, uh, <laughs> but big hair, soft voice Bob Ross had a wonderful way of turn, making things turn into beauty. And I want to say to you this morning, life is hard. And maybe you think this morning that something's happened in your life and there's been pain and heartache and heartbreak and, and, and that you feel like God doesn't love you. And I hope that I've convinced you this morning how worthy you are. And I want to convince you to get back up on God's easel. And allow him to take whatever that pain is, whatever that hurt is. You know, some of the things that happened to me as a young adult that um, I still haven't told a lot of people about, although you've listened about more of it than most people. God has used those things for good. He's put a little color over here. He's put a little person over there, put a little love over here. And he's, he's allowed it to, to within that big picture that God's still painting of me to be used for his kingdom. Let him restore you. Let him help you discover his purpose for you. You can't be saved by grace. But friends, I want to say to you, get out there and do some good works. He sure loves you and wants you to, to be a part of that. So Linda and I did not, did not talk about this uh, this morning. I was chasing the dog down. And um, she posted this on Facebook. And um, so I, I, I want to read uh, a part of it if I can find it. Uh, I found it. I like it when the choir sings something that we didn't plan and it just matches beautifully as it did this morning. I love it when I find something on Facebook. It, it, God's better than Google. You know how you walk around and you mention something the next day it shows up. You're having that conversation. God hears everything you're doing. I keep hearing about vaccines that are going to track us and we've been, you know, God's tracking us. He's, he's the one who's already been listening, good and bad. And even if it's bad, he still loves you. And so this is, I think, uh, appropriate for this morning, and I'll end with this. Do you ever feel unloved, unworthy, unimportant? Yep, me too, all the time. But here's the good news. You don't have to feel loved, feel loved. You don't have to deserve love. You are loved because God says so. Need some biblical reminders? Here you go. He loves you with an everlasting love, Jeremiah 31.3. We are dearly loved, Romans 5.5. 5. God has great love for us, Romans. Nothing can separate us from his love for us, Romans 8.35. He controls us. His, his love controls us, 2 Corinthians 5.14. His love gives everything to us, Galatians 2.20. He loved us even before he made the world, Ephesians 1.4. His love gives us life, Ephesians 2.4. His love is wide and high and long and deep, Ephesians 3.18. His love is too great for us to understand, Ephesians chapter 3.19. His love has chosen us. 2 Thessalonians 2.16. His love for us is out of this world. 1 John 3.1. He showed his love to us. 1 John 4.9. He, lo he loved us first. 1 John 4.10. He is, he is love. 1 John 4.16. Just a couple more. His love keeps us safe. Jude 1.1. 1, 1. And his love has freed us. Revelations 1.5. Our feeling loved or unloved has nothing to do with the reality 
of God's love for us. Thank goodness. Our feelings of being loved cannot stand in the way of God's truth that we are loved. Doesn't matter how we feel, God still loves us. Doesn't matter if we're worthy of his love, God still loves us. Doesn't matter what we've done, God still loves us. My prayer for you today is that we are reminded of this powerful truth. You are loved. And being loved, we are called to love others. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your love. There may be somebody here that needs to hear our message. I think we all do, but maybe in particular, I know there may be someone online that's going, wow, I, I needed to hear that today. God, often when we talk about sinfulness and brokenness and we hear that sermon, we go, I wish so-and-so would hear that one. And we're often the ones that need to hear that as well. God, we can all think of someone who needs to be reminded of his love. And, and again, maybe we've kind of given up loving and caring and doing the good works you have for us. Help us not to, to eternally run around trying to please you. You already love us, but out of our thankfulness, help us to live our lives for you. We thank you for that love. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing this song together. <laughs> Everybody can stand. We're going to sing Holy is the Lord as soon as the piano comes on. There we go. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength we bow down and worship him now how great how awesome is he and together we sing everyone sing holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with his glory we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. And it's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. So together we sing. Everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with his glory, the earth is filled with his glory. 
Please be seated. As we lift up our congregation this morning and the world around us, we'll start with Connor Luke. Um, it, it, if you're not a Facebook person, you may not have heard, but, but uh, Connor Luke had a real close call in February and almost didn't make it. He made it. Um, but he is uh, facing another uh, a great battle this, this week and uh, through his treatment, five, little five-year-old, five-year-olds? Six now, six, six-year-old, uh, who's got really long cancer name, and it's it's been moving all over, and they've been treating it just very, very uh, rigorously. And um, it is it is the is the the post says so. I, I'm not saying anything out of out of uh, word, but it, it has moved up into his uh, his head, and uh, it's it's a really and it, it's it's kind of getting out of control. And so they're the team, they're going to do another scan this week, and and the teams are going to meet decide uh, what they can or can't do. Um, and uh, there's some places online where they have prayer vigils for the family. So um, even if you're not signed up for that, please take some time and uh, pray. Pray for Connor Luke and the Holtman family and Brandy and Chad, his parents, and uh, just all of them that are just um, you know, that are you know, really hurting this week. Remember them in your prayers. Uh, we want to pray for Joy Jones' sister-in-law, Anna, and uh, got got good news this week. She had a a, a big cancer or, or at least a mass that was kind of involved and all around and they went in and they and they operated on it and it just kind of slid out apparently is what what they said just they they, they got it all out so uh, it was kind of wrapped up and around and um so they're, they're running some tests on it but but so pray for anna and pray that uh, this is a good good week for her that that she hears good news um, Hal Holmesley had a hip replacement uh, recently, and and he's up doing doing well. So thankful for that. Um, I, I know that Daniel, with his shoulder surgery, I think I've gotten gotten a couple texts for him that he's doing pretty good. And we're praying for you as a caregiver as well. And we'll pray for all caregivers, but pray for Daniel's recovery. Um, I, I know uh, this past week. Uh, Barbara Benson went back to the doctor to have some tests run, and uh, they they're going to do some other things, uh, but just uh, that they can find what they need to find there, and and that 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 you're in in, in God's hand, and that you find His peace until you find those answers. Uh, I want to pray for Stephanie Morlando, whose mom's in the hospital, not doing well at all, and uh, she's been there for a couple of weeks now, I think. Uh, Paul West, brother-in-law, we prayed last week for George. Uh, colon surgery and came through that and keep praying for him. Did he pass away last Sunday? Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. We were, we were praying, praying for him, but we'll pray for his family and yours as well. Sorry to hear that, that loss. Um, and then again, we want to pray for Kenya team in Kenya. They, they arrived safely. They're in Humphrey's hands and he will take good care of them. And uh, so we, we ask that uh, that that goes well. Uh, we we could pray for any number of uh, big things in, in the news around the world, all kinds of violence and people not getting along and after each other. But like I said last week, I think we need to re remember again that our young people, even those those sitting here today, they may be the ones that come up with the the answer to people never stealing our password again. They may be the ones that come up and, 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 and have an answer to um, homelessness or hunger. There may be somebody sitting here today that finally figures out um, how to treat cancer. And, and uh, our, our future, we, we need to continue to, um, to bless and reach out to our, our kids. And even in church, we want, like I said, we want to make sure that there's a next generation of people in church. I was uh, asked to, to give some suggestions for a, a church that uh, um, is, is south of here um, that has now gotten wonderful buildings, but they're now down to eight people. No kids. But they're doing things the way they've always done them. And, and I, I, uh, we may do things at some point the way we've always done them. But you'll drag me out of here because I think my calling is to help us to keep this church going and reach out to the next generation. 
and I answer to him. So we th we're thankful for God. We're called to bless. There are some wonderful young people in our world, and we're thankful for them and all that they do. And it blesses my heart when I see them in church on a Sunday morning. So let's lift up our prayers and, and uh, this morning, and both spoken and, and unspoken, and uh, pray for our church, its leaders, the world, world's leaders, and um, let's honor God in all that we do. God, we, we thank you for good news. For those who have um, had good results, are doing well, recovering, whether it's from shoulder, hip, surgeries, heart masses, those things, God, help them to heal. And, and we so often pray for, for those in, in need that we forget to bless you and praise you for those who've recovered or are recovering. But we also know that, that there are just, just great sadnesses in our church and the world. So I do pray for Connor Luke and his family as they face a very difficult week ahead and have already been struggling through the last one. Lord, bless them and, and give them peace and help the, the, the team of surgeons and caregivers and everybody in there to, to know what the next steps are. And, and God, pray for little Connor Luke. He's been such a little warrior through all of this. And God, he's already, already blessed and reached more people than uh, many people I know who've lived to be 100. And I, I pray that his life is uh, being used for, for goodness and kindness. God, I pray for, for Paul West's family and, and uh, for uh, George's family and uh, just, just comfort them and help them in that loss. I, I thank you that we'll get a chance to gather again and give, give thanks for Jet Morgan's life. Pray for Stephanie's mom in the hospital. Uh, Lord, give her peace as well. And God, we, uh, we come to you in a moment of quiet. While you love us greatly, I, we also know that we make great mistakes, that you've given us this ability to, to sin and make, make mistakes. Uh, and you long to forgive us, but you desire that we ask to be forgiven. And so we come in this moment and we ask for your forgiveness and your grace and your mercy. And I'm thankful that you were so slow to anger. But Lord, when you did get angry, you sent us Jesus. Lord, we come. God, we pray for the team in Kenya. Uh, for those who didn't get to go, I know that there were many who wanted to go, but there was just too many uncertainties and this, still this COVID situation around the world. We thank you that, uh, that, that Reba and Diane, her sister Diane, and, and that Andy could make it, and Andy's going to be there a while, and we, we pray that'll be a good experience for him and for them as well. Lord, help whatever your purpose was for this week to be accomplished or these weeks to be accomplished. And God, I, again, I just pray for the young people in our church that are here today. Help them to know in the midst of this world that's so messed up that you made them, you've created them for a purpose, that you love them so deeply. You sing over them, you smile over them. You protect them. And God, our, our churches are, are only a generation from extinction if we don't continue to seek and love you and, and continue to reach out with open arms to love the next generation. So God, I, I pray that we could open our hearts to whatever it is you call us to do to be a blessing to all of those who are around us. Help us to seek your will, both now and, 
Every day and to that end, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Remember that as we leave, that we are called to be of service. Go do good works. Go share your gifts. As God has blessed you, blessed others. We have been blessed to be a blessing. And what, an, what a wonderful life this is to live, to have that opportunity and to, for us to discover while everybody else is seeking to, to be blessed for their own being blessedness, God has blessed us. Our purpose in life is to be blessed, to be a blessing. And I hope that you ask yourself today, am I still being a blessing wherever I am to those around us the way God wants me to? Our offering plates are in the back. You can give online, all of those things. Thank you for your continued wonderful generosity. Uh, is greatly appreciated, and God is working through you. So uh, please feel free to visit out front for a while, and another probably a little muggy, but a, a nice day to be outside and be together. Uh, this past month or so has been so wonderful to see people just hanging out, wanting to be together, hugging each other, and uh, worshiping God, and, and well, thank you for coming. So this morning, may God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, May you know that he's with you no matter what you face this week and what you're going through. And, and may you just, just realize the depth of who he is and how he loves and how he loves you. Go in peace. God bless.